kitchen here in Austin, Texas. I'm the pastry chef at Olame here in Austin. Uh, we are a fine dining southern restaurant uh, focusing on all the states across the, the south, but um, influences for me is a lot of South Louisiana and South Texas. It's where I spent most of my childhood, um, as you'll see with some of these cookies and some of the stories I have to tell today. Um, first things first, we are baking with beer, so I'm gonna take a little sip of beer. This is a tiny kitchen. I literally can stand in the middle and almost reach end to end. Uh, and I am not a tall person. Uh, so I just wanted to show everybody that you can bake at home. You don't need a ton of space. Uh, you can do this kind of stuff with only a tiny little uh, counter space. So um, in an electric stove, you don't always need gas. So I think it's important for everybody to kind of realize that. So that's one of the biggest reasons I wanted to invite you guys into uh, my kitchen at home. Uh, so today we're going to make some <clears throat> ginger cookies. Uh, I got some beer uh, last week from New Belgium and kind of tasted through them and got a lot of the notes of, of what I wanted to bake with. And so I immediately thought with that tire that it would go great with ginger. So uh, for those that know me and those that don't know me, you're about to find out. Uh, I love old recipes. I love to... Uh, have a collection of old cookbooks. Um, I like to reach out to my mom um, and get some of her uh, recipes that she's had passed down for generations for her. So I reached out to my mom. I was like, do you have a ginger-esque uh, snap recipe? And she goes, of course. She sends it over to me. First thing I noticed is that it calls for molasses, obviously with most ginger snap cookies. So I immediately thought, let's make our own beer molasses. So we're gonna start with some beer molasses, um, and then we'll go into making the cookie, and then we'll bake some off, and then of course at the end we'll eat it. I'm gonna keep drinking this wonderful beer as we go along. Sorry, by the way, this is the Agua Fresca from New Belgium. It's really good. It's really great when you're baking. It's super refreshing, and you can just drink it all day. So, uh, so, so what we're gonna do is make a little bit of our beer molasses. So first things first, um, we're using Fat Tire New Belgium. Um, this is a, I like to call it like a utility beer. It's pretty versatile. <laughs> One, it's great to drink uh, year round. It's always there. Um, and it's great for cooking and baking. It has a very um, uh, versatile uh, flavor profile that can really go with a lot of different things. Uh, so it's kind of why I decided to use this one. Um, I also think it, when we were tasting through them, I just immediately thought gender and how cool this would be. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I've got my beer. I'm just going to weigh it out. Um, and a little bit hard you guys with all the recipes, as recipes and weights, so I won't go through all of it right now. Um, just so you guys don't have to write it down. Um, but you're just going to weigh out your beer. And I open this earlier in the day. Also, just so it goes a little bit flat. Just so whenever you're pouring it, you don't get a ton of bubbles and a ton of air in there and you can get a proper weight. So we put the flat tire beer in there. Uh, we're going to do uh, brown sugar. So we're just going to go ahead and weigh this out. We're going to put a little bit of lemon juice and then the smallest little amount of cream of tartare. I'm just going to put a little bit of sugar in uh, When you're cooking sugars, you only want to mix the sugar uh, liquid that's on heat till it comes to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, then you don't want to touch it. You don't want it to. Uh, you don't want to agitate it. Um, if you agitate something, the sugars will start to crystallize. So I'm going to stir this medium to high heat, just so we're melting that sugar. I made some earlier. Show you guys actually, which will be the final product. I made this earlier today. A uh, couple of reasons. One, whenever we're uh, doing cookies or baking of any kind, you want all of your stuff to be cool at room temperature. Um, I should, sorry, not cool, room temperature. Uh, so I made this earlier and it was super hot. So I wanted to let it cool down for us to use. So I can get real close here. So I use. I'm just using this fork so you can kind of show the thickness of it. It's a little bit like a loose molasses, almost like a cane syrup kind of consistency. So we're almost there. Give it a couple more stirs. 
So you can see it's going to start bubbling a little bit in the middle. And that's kind of what we're looking for. Once you start to get that growing, I'm going to turn it down a little bit lower. So a couple of different things. You either want a tall pot. So as it bubbles, you don't have to stir it or you don't have to worry about it kind of going over. The other thing is just kind of lift it a little bit. So if it starts to get close and you don't want it to overflow, that'll kind of stop it from cooking um, and kind of going crazy. So, so I just give it, you know, maybe another 30 seconds or so. Again, not too long once it comes to a boil. So your molasses, your beer molasses. It's like a beer. I wouldn't recommend drinking this right now. It's super hot. Now we're gonna get on to the cookies. So cookies, um, again, we wanna keep most everything at room temperature. So I've got my butter already mixed up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and weigh up the sugar. So got a little bit of sugar. <clears throat> got my butter, sorry, my room temperature butter is already in there. I'm a granulated sugar. Um, in here I have uh, ground cinnamon, ground ginger, baking soda, and I'm also going to put a little bit of salt. So I always put salt in my pastries. I think it's important. I think it brings out the richness of the different flavors in there. So, um, butter, sugar, salt, all of your baking spices, as well as your baking soda. I'm gonna take this cooled beer molasses that I made earlier. Again, make sure it's cool. I can touch this. I can, if I wanted to drink this now, I totally could, but I won't. So we're going to put that in there as well. Just right on top. So, we're going to get this mixer going. I have a wonderful red KitchenAid. Thing to remember, you don't need a KitchenAid to bake. It helps, 100%. But there are plenty of people that were baking before KitchenAid came around and had the accessibility to mixing. So, and you just want to mix it till um, it kind of gets lighter in color and the butter starts to, uh, the, the butter mixture starts to kind of pull away from the sides. Um, now I'm going to go ahead, I have this egg that I cracked earlier that came to room temperature. So once it kind of comes together, Again, always scraping sides. We're gonna take our flour. So with this one, I am using uh, King Author. So we're just gonna put that right in there. On this recipe, you're gonna put in all of your flour. You don't have, uh, some recipes have like alternating liquids and, and dries. This one, add it all. When you're making cookies, you can usually use all different kinds of flours. You may just have to adjust your recipe. Um, flours have different proteins. So that just means the structure in your cookies is going to be different. So uh, for this one, I would recommend using all purpose or this special patent flour, which is, you know, what we have. The protein is just a little bit higher in there. Um, so you can see I just kind of mix it till it came together. There's still some flour on there. So what I'm gonna do, with buddy, I'm just gonna take the last of it with my spatula and I'm just gonna get all that last bit of the flour off of the sides and just finish that by hand. You don't wanna over mix your cookies. It changes the consistency, you get a little bit chewier, right? That's what they always say, don't over mix your batters. So I went ahead, I put that dough back into the bowl. I'm gonna wrap it with some, I guess it's called plaster wrap, food film, saran wrap. Just put it against the batter. 
and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this into the fridge. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do with that cookie dough, you're going to go, you're going to drink the rest of your beer, maybe another two, just hang out. We're going to let that cookie dough hang out in the fridge until it gets nice and chilled. Usually an hour up to 24 hours. The thing that I like with cookie dough is that you can make it ahead of time, leave it in the fridge for the next couple days and you can just pull them and bake them when you want. Or if you wanted to make a big batch, if you're like, I'm only going to bake, I only have time to bake on Saturdays with my kids because we're going to do it all together. Make that cookie dough. We're going to scoop it. I'm going to show you how to scoop it here in just a second. And then you can um, freeze it. Put it in the freezer, pop it in the freezer, and they'll usually last in the freezer for a good while. Usually cookies take about 12 minutes to bake, so you can have fresh cookies whenever you want. Which then it's an hour later. This is firm. So all you're going to do, and I'm going to hold it up and show you, just because I can't hold the screen. So, I just take it, you're going to scoop it, just flatten it out, that's it. And a perfect little cookie. And these were actually, I had them in the freezer overnight, but I pulled them this morning, so they're soft again. Um, you can also bake these straight from the freezer, so no worries about that. Um, so I just put some sugar in a bowl. Um, and I'm going to coat these in sugar. So you can also uh, put a little bit of ginger in there if you want to put some sugar and some cinnamon and ginger, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then I'm just going to dip this in the sugar. I'm just going to give it a good coat on it. I don't press mine down or anything like that on these cookies um, just because the the oven will do the work. The oven will let them spread. They'll, they'll be fine. So. Um, I'm going to pop these in the oven. Timer and cookies next to each other. Six minutes. I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to do another six minutes. Um, and you're just looking for them to kind of be uh, set up and dark around the edges. And these kind of crack open. So this is how it comes out. When it's nice and done. It's evenly baked all across. This one, I got really excited and I was like, I want more beer flavor. So I took some of the beer molasses that I had made and at the end of it, um, I just, like once I pulled them out of the oven, I took the molasses and I just kind of sprinkled some of that on top. Um, and that kind of just will give it more of a sugary beer flavor. <laughs> Um, those cookies are going to keep on baking, and I'm going to enjoy this one, um, because it's so good. And that's it. So that's me with a full mouth. And that's my mom's ginger snap-esque cookies. Have fun baking. Thank you. Bye.